Let's go over the top five tips for the month of May 2024. First of all, starting off with the utilization of Road to Labyrinth. You might have Null and Void, and to be honest, if, you, you, if you've got it, you've probably already smashed it out. But if you're looking for a quick way to go do it, the same thing when it comes to uh, Delta missions, you can do this by going and taking some of the aforementioned champions, which you can see there, Mole Man, Quicksilver, Longshot, Corvus Glaive, Omega Sentinel, and Omega Red, uh, but also looking at Null and Void, where some of the champions that share the synergy, which are the ones you can see on screen right now, ranging from Hulk, Black, Widow, Vision, Hawkeye, um, all defeating uh, said champions as well, can all be done in Road to Labyrinth. Yes, you can also use Arena. If you want to do that for free, go do that. I'm very much a case of getting on and working on stuff, so I will definitely go into Road to Labyrinth and then run on Quest 1.2, which is this one here, 1.2. Uh, I'm in a quest at the moment, so I can't go in and show you. You, but you take my word from it there's a hawkeye one energy target go and repeat that multiple times if you want to but brutally honest the null and void you can literally go anywhere in game and find you smashing out without even having any kind of effort i did most of mine in incursions to, to give you a, a, a bit of an idea if you're looking to utilize a mole man uh, against or any other champion that's mentioned in the omega days then just go into 1.1 because it's like one energy one defeat and then it's like that or use arena or other elements as well and other places uh, if you want to save your energy Tip number two, in about a few days, we're going to see Spring of Sorrow. And this is all about farming those revives and health potions. Whether or not you're like myself, you're auto-fighting through road, not road to Labyrinth, Realm of Legends. Nowadays, and I will be talking in a video about auto-fighting with seven stars and how that can be really beneficial for, for people, especially with farming those potions, revives and health potions. It's really, really important to find out how many you've got. Remember, you don't have to do content as soon as it goes live. You can wait a little while, especially because in the time frame and between now and the end of the month, you can pick up 126 of four hour crystals. I'm a big advocate of the fact of saving the four hour crystals, largely to see what you pick up. Like you could pick up some revives, health potions, more than likely, or uh, for energy refills, which again, very important uh, for, for players, especially because you can have them in the stash and waiting there for a certain amount of days. You can also do in that time frame, which will be say 21 days, you know, three weeks, you can also do Apothecary. Apothecary is a great place to pick up at least one revive per day, so make sure that you get it on a daily basis. On my to-do list on a daily basis, when I wake up in the morning, I auto-fight myself through Apothecary and go and collect my daily from the web store. That is so darn important, and look out for a big opening of daily crystals come the end of the month, which, again, I'm looking forward to that. should have 90 uh, by the time I do my opening, so uh, I'm very much looking forward to doing that video and seeing what I can get. Hopefully, I pick up my very first 7-star from it, but we'll have to see. Uh, make sure to grab that on a daily basis from the web store. But yes, farm revives, farm health potions, and, and do that. Also, make sure to pick up your uh, energy refills and prime gaming bundles uh, if you've got Amazon Prime. It's, uh, it's you know great little added extra, especially for energy refills, and you can look to farm things like uh, lower content for units and other stuff like that. Next up, and incursions. A lot of people make the very quick, snappy decision to try and do content, and especially when it costs them a lot of units, it's always best to wait a little while. I also recommend, as someone that does incursions a lot, is to test champions out on lower content. As you can see, in Sector 5, I've done all of the zones. Yeah, big whoop, it's an easier bit of content. Of course it is. This is where you go to train. This is where you take some of the champions, a part of Ex Magica, and you test them out on lower areas. It's not going to be so much of a, a bane for you. You can get an idea and feel for the champions. You can also test out theories of pairing them up with different types of hacks. Yes, Sector 7 is going to be a different kettle of fish, especially because it will be like you can keep hacks on for longer. You can choose, pick and choose better. Better. And yes, some of the champions are going to be different and they're going to be more frustrating. But at least what you can do with a lower content is go, I figured out this champion. I figured out a decent synergy pairing. This works with this. This is better like that. Suicide Masteries, non-Suicide Masteries. And you do that tester first. It's so important to get an idea of how incursions like works and as well get an idea of like, you know, okay, this, this was. So you're just not making any kind of 
rash or bad decisions. Next week, I set to do my Sector 7 guide on various champions that can work relatively well for different types of situations. Uh, but for the meantime, I have put a link in the description to my older spreadsheet. This is from the start of the year with the, I think it's like a uh, Lunar New Year uh, incursions event. So I've put that in the link in the description if you want to check out. It is not the Ex Magica one, it's just something that gives you an idea of flavour of pairing and getting an idea of like, this works with this. My Ex Magica version of this will be out at some point next week before I go on holiday, um, so I'll try and get that as soon as possible. But, you know, make sure just not to, people just do rush into that and find they're spending copious amounts of units and going... Kamam done us dirty. Kamam did do us dirty with Sector Seven, and that's that's a fact. But the 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 thing is, just don't rush into this stuff. Just take a bit of time, see what's about there. Test champions out on lower content, and go. This works. This doesn't. You got five minute timers, so come on, use them. Tip number four, Mysterium. Make sure to spend this. You have a limited time before this all expires. What kind of expiry? Well, at the end of the event. It's best to go by, if, especially if you go to uh, the bottom, you'll see X Magical Runestone says 25 days and 20 odd hours, maybe 24 when you see this video. But that'll give you a bit of an idea of when the event entirely ends. And at that particular point, you have to spend all your Mysterium. Keep a log of your Mysterium because you can only hold 50k at one time, but you have to go spending it in different areas. So yeah, buy the best stuff that you feel is kind of like at your point of like top end of progression, like... Mine is going to be bundle 5 because it's uh, not bundle 5, sorry, it's uh, bundle. Uh, I'm missing the bundle, actually. Where is it? No, no, it's bundle 4, which I've already bought. Um, but yeah, that's when I get 7 star shards and also basic alphas and signature stones. So grab what you feel is necessary for you, but make sure to spend it. If you, if you don't in that time frame, you won't be able to buy specifically what you're targeting and look at buying stuff here first before buying in say glory store loyalty store or other places where currency like even trophy tokens are going to be like a premium because you can just spend in mysterium for free because it's a limited currency so uh yep good luck and the final tip is unit farming for this month it's going to be very, very important to grab as many units as possible. The same thing with June and going into July. At the end of June, it's more than likely we'll see the July 4th deals or Fun in the Sun deals. And, uh, and then you've got to make that decision of are you going to spend in it or use your units or wait until Cyber Weekend uh, deals. To give you a quick flavor of uh, some estimates, the following is that you can get 1,500 units from solo events, 600 units from J June event quests, because let's face it, we're going to be um, half and half here. You could have units still available in May. It's just a case of an estimate. An estimated unit rotation, 4K, 4, 450, 2,025. Same with the uh, uh, the featured arena, the basic again. Look, in a nutshell, you can get upwards of, um, of 8,550 units plus any crystal luck you get. So 8,550 units could be beneficial to somebody to at least get them close to the next deal. I mean, to give you an idea, if I bothered to kind of like do 7K at this moment in time, I'd have enough to get uh, all the deals I probably want from Fun in the Sun, providing Kabam do it fairly. If they don't, then I'm going to have to go, let's save all my units and have a bigger push in something like Cyber Weekend deals, or save for a big turnout to get a decent solo rank in the banquet event. If you watch a video later on next week, you'll understand the extent of how many units you'll need, how many you can be farming in this time, and the difference it's going to make. But there we go. That has been your top tips for May. Good luck in the grind, whatever you're grinding and doing in-game. Check out some other content located on screen, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.